Hey team, how's it going? This is Eddie Gray. Welcome to the channel, The Modern Creative, where we help you become a better producer. And we're looking at Explorer. This is a sample manager by Sound Particles. Now, Sound Particles is no ordinary company, and of course, they did not make an ordinary sample manager. This is for anybody in the world of Ambisonics, Dolby, any of those crazy formats, 7.1, 5.1, all that stuff, this is going to be the sample library for you. Now, something to think about here is that it is free. And so we definitely want to say a big thank you. And I would just want to acknowledge this company for being generous during these times. So check it out. It's very easy to use. Basically, just drag and drop samples into it. It's that easy. On the left-hand side, we have a database, which basically looks at all of the various uh, categories of your samples and then on the right hand side we have playlists and so you could think of that like managing perhaps projects or genres on the right hand side we have the properties page gives you information like the file type the duration things of that nature and then on the bottom we have the editor now this can be modified to some degree for example if you don't want the properties page you can click up here on the top right but generally speaking you're gonna want to be in the action. So I'm going to resize the audio editor here and let's start by playing this sample. Let's see what it sounds like. All right, now I'm looping this, okay? You don't necessarily have to do that, but I definitely like that workflow. So let's say you wanted to pitch that. We have the pitch wheel here so we can change up in or down in semitones. Okay, so that's nice. We can also change the clip gain on the right hand side. Now, if you wanted just to hear one channel or the other, you can do that. So lots of great stuff. But again, you can customize this depending on how complicated your setup is. Now, my favorite feature of all is definitely this one on the left. It's called effects. Now, listen to this sample here. Okay, now if I wanted to, I can also play that in reverse by clicking on this reverse playback. Okay, so you can also hear your samples in reverse if you wanted to. But on the left hand side, there's a feature called Whoosh. So let me go ahead and send that over to my Logic Pro session. I'm going to click on the bottom right where it says Logic, and that's going to send it. But it's saying, hey, do you want to send the original or the edited version? Of course, I want to send what I just created. So when I zip over here, let's take a listen. So this is a phenomenal way, honestly, honestly, of creating great whoosh sounds uh, in a way that we can all do obviously but it would just take a little longer so what I want to do now is just kind of start demoing how I would use this so let me find a decent sound here okay I definitely like this and so I'm gonna go ahead and create a loop not challenging to do that let's enable the loop here and let's hear this from top to bottom okay I am getting a little bit of a pop, and so I'm just going to create a slight fade in and out. Let's see if that rectifies it. Okay, that's at least musical, so I dig that. Uh, let me go over to Logic Pro, put the playhead at bar one, and focus on the track where I want to send this over to. And again, we'll click on Logic so we can send it over. But you can also export right here on the left-hand side. But let's go ahead, send it over to Logic. Okay, so as you can see that this sample is not perfectly in line with the grid. So I'm going to create a cycle region that is perfectly on the grid. So this is bar 1, B3. I'm going to click on the region itself so it's in key focus. And I'm going to hit Option Command L. And what this is going to do, it's going to tell this sample, hey, can you stretch out in such a way where you could meet the demand of this specific time? And so now this should be in time. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and hit Command R a couple times. Okay, and so now by creating a batch fade, this should sound fairly musical. Let's try it out. All right, so normally you probably don't write music like this, but just a great way to kind of change up the, the scheme of things. So if you're always writing on a piano, you might want to write on a guitar. If you're always writing on a, on a guitar, you might want to write with a sample library manager. So let's see what else do we have on here. I really like that. So I'm just going to literally drag and drop that into the session. 
With sounds like this, we're probably gonna have to add some reverb. So it dies off really quick, right? And so just to kind of put a little bit of makeup on it, we're just gonna go ahead and increase the decay and increase the pre-delay time so it hits after the initial transient. All right, I definitely want that decay to be longer than that. Okay, so then now we have a riser, uh, just a cool kind of decoration, and then a somewhat musical sample here. Let's definitely add some drums from Logic, and I definitely want hip hop, but not the ordinary hip hop, so I'll open up the library and go into the world of boom bap. All right, let's see what that sounds like. So let's see what else we can add into the mix. That might work. That could work as well. Mm, I kind of like this. It has a musical flair to it. Um, just a heads up, the sample itself has a little bit of dead time on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this into the track header, but I'm gonna go ahead and add it into a quick sampler. And as you can see here inside of the user interface, it's cutting off the dead time, the silence, before the sample actually starts. And so if we look at the root key, it is C3, so let's look for that inside of the musical typing keyboard. I actually like what it sounds like pitched down a little bit, so I'm gonna keep that, uh, but I will filter the top a little bit. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna go ahead and create a pattern region, why? Well, to be honest, it just is a lot easier to input MIDI this way. There's no mathematics involved, it's all done for you. Let's go ahead and listen to this. It could also be a little bit wetter as well to make it more kind of indistinguishable. So let's do that. Good, so you can see we're starting to create something here. All right, so let's just go ahead and put the cherry on top and add a little bit of bass. This time we'll do it uh, within Logic. If you haven't played with drum synth, it is really good. Highly recommend you get into it. And so uh, interface is really easy to use. Let's go ahead and add some tone. Find the right pitch. Okay, and then definitely some saturation. Okay. All right, let's see if we can come up with a decent bass line here. Okay, so sometimes I'll just play something simple like that, and then I'll try and get in here and try and break it down. So let's quantize. Okay, and I think if I move this over, we should be in a decent spot. So again, drafting ideas that I probably wouldn't draft if I was doing everything, you know, the traditional way, but just a heads up, this thing really has a lot of power, and for those of you that are, are really deep into samples. I cannot emphasize how great this can be for you. Hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, before you go, just check out the preferences. As you can see, it's got a bunch of stuff for bass management, for binaural monitoring, so on and so forth. So, hey, thank you so much for watching the video. If you like it, go ahead and download Sound Explorer today. We've got a lot of content coming soon. Go ahead and subscribe. I will see you on the next one. Take care.